Hi, my name is Melissa Ewing, and I'm the lead pastor at Redwood Park Church in Thunder Bay, Ontario. My husband, Jay, is also on staff as our pastor of spiritual formation, and he's also a spiritual director. We've been here for two years, and a major focus for us and our staff is to grow in well-being and resilience. Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. We take that seriously. Knowing that as clergy, we are dealing with issues of the heart. So we have a responsibility to guard our own hearts in Christ, knowing that both our flourishing and the flourishing of our church flows out of us abiding in Him. So I'd like to highlight three things that have made a difference in our setting beyond the obvious things like daily prayer and spiritual disciplines. First, as a staff, we routinely read and discuss books together that focus on our own spiritual, relational, and emotional growth. We'll read a chapter a week and then come together with our staff meeting to to chat about it and pray. The first book that we read together when we arrived was this one, Leading Me, Eight Practices for a Christian Leader's Most Important Assignment by Dr. Steve Brown, who's the president of Arrow Leadership. Steve has a newer book out that we're going to do, Jesus-Centered, Focusing on Jesus in a Distracted World. Doing book studies and applying the content as a staff has created a culture where we can be open and honest with one another regarding our walk with Jesus and our own journey towards overall health. Secondly, we put spiritual direction in our budget for all staff. All staff, including administrative support, has access to a spiritual director, and we've made it mandatory for our pastoral team. The purpose is not to debrief ministry, but to attend to our own souls, our own walk with Jesus. Seeing a spiritual director for me has been crucial. Uh, She helps me keep connection with Jesus as first and foremost in my job and in my life. And then when the harder seasons of ministry come, my spiritual director continually points me to Jesus, which helps me to keep proper perspective on whatever it is I'm facing. And finally, I'd love to share about our kid's pastor with her permission, of course. Even though she's the youngest pastor on our staff with the least amount of pastoral years under her belt, after a long and tumultuous season of ministry, we've discerned with her that she needs to rest and heal. So this week, she begins a paid sabbatical, and the focus is simply resting and connecting with Jesus. She is going to increase her time with a spiritual director and a therapist and take an extended spiritual retreat. And we know this time will help her to set the tone for a lifetime of vocational ministry where pacing, rest, and connection with Jesus is crucial if we want to avoid burning out early. As we have leaned into these things, we are seeing our church respond as well with deepening faith to sustain the social action our church has always participated in. And there seems to be a new sense of community and relationship forming as well. We know that healthy pastors equal healthy churches because we can only lead as far as we've gone ourselves. So I'll close with two questions for us to ponder. First, as clergy, am I guarding my heart, keeping Jesus first, and knowing that everything I do flows from this? And two, what intentional steps can I take within my own setting immediately to grow in relationship with Christ, knowing that resilience and well-being comes out of my connection to him. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.